Good morning everyone and welcome back to another episode of Salty Tales. As the title say, today we are trying to cook an Aaron Franklin style brisket in the Kamado Grill. There is nothing more American than barbecue and conquering brisket is the highest goal of any pit master. If you don't believe me, ask the French. And there is no better brisket in the entire freaking country better than Franklin's barbecue. I read a lot of articles and watched a lot of videos about how he makes brisket and what his method has changed in the last 10 years. There is something that hasn't changed at all, and that is his popularity as the only place to experience real Texas barbecue. And today we are going to try and replicate his methods on brisket, but using a Kamado grill. And yes, I know he uses offset smokers in his place, but we all know that Kamado grills are one of the best smokers out there. My Kamado grill right there is a Louisiana grill, made and sold by Pit Boss, highly recommendable. But you can take all brand references out of your mind right away. This cook can be done in any Kamado grill. No matter if you have a big green egg, a Kamado Joe, or a Primo grill. If you follow this video step by step, you can expect the same result. Good, but I don't know yet. That's something we're gonna see in a little bit. But first, let's talk about the meat. Every single brisket cook starts with the meat. And this here is a choice brisket I got yesterday from the store. As you can see, it is a really good choice as I spend time choosing the best brisket from all the available options. And the first thing we have to do with it is to trim it. Frankies recommend to leave a quarter inch of the fat on top of the brisket and remove everything else that goes over. For instance, this big chunk of fat on the point. I know removing this takes a huge part out of the brisket, but it also makes it more aerodynamic and easier for the smoke to roll over. Once it is all trimmed, we need to season. As a good Texan, he recommends using salt and pepper only for the rub. And while he does recommend a 50-50 mix, I was watching his recommendations very closely and realized that he uses more like a 60-40. But remember, this is all coarse salt and pepper. Never use fine salt on your brisket, as the measurements will change. Also, he doesn't cover the entire brisket with the rub. The rub is applied loosely, never too packed, as the seasoning will overpower the flavors of the meat, and that is something to avoid. Right, we have it all rubbed and ready. Now, I will set this baby in the fridge and let it soak all that rub in until tomorrow morning. Kamado grills were created for long cooks, and while you can cook anything in it, in the long cook is where it really shines. The way this grill works is a little bit different than other smokers. The air comes from the bottom and goes up, hitting the charcoals and feeding all those beautiful flames. But the fire never touched the meat, as the diffuser is right in the middle between the fire and the grates. Allowing the heat to go up, hit the dome and roll back right on top of the brisket, melting all that beautiful fat right into the meat, creating a fluid convection wave that goes up and down as we cook. And as the fat melts right on top of the meat, it will keep all that brisket moist and flavorful. And that is the main rule. If it dries, you lose. Next day, early in the morning, is when we get the bowl rolling. With the grill clean and nice, I will start my fire using a blazer bowl, link in the description, and fill up half of the grill up with charcoal. That will be plenty for this cook. Once the charcoal is lit, close the dome with the vents all the way open, and let the heat build. And right before the heat gets to 250 degrees, is when we get it ready to cook. Shut the bottom vent this much, and leave the top one fully open. Also, add the wood to the grill. In this case, I'm using post oak, as that is the one Franklin used in the smokers. When using a Kamado grill, set a piece of wood right on top of the lead charcoal and some other chunks outside of the fire so they can burn at different intervals. Now, add the diffuser and the grease to the grill so they can all heat up at the same time. When you add the diffuser and grease to a Kamado grill, the temperature will plump down a little bit as it has to heat up all these new structures so don't freak out if you see a change in the gauges. Meanwhile, get your brisket out of the fridge and set your thermometer in. As always, I'm using my meter thermometer, and I will set it up in the center of the point, which is the thickest part of the brisket. Now, with the grill back at 250 degrees is when we set the brisket in. But remember, Frankie's recommend to cook brisket with the fat side up. Close the dome and let it be until it gets to 170 degrees internal. Well, the internal temperature got to 170 degrees and it is time to check. Please understand that I say time to check, not to wrap. 
First, we need to take a look at the meat. See the colors, the rough setting, and the moist distribution. If the colors got into that beautiful dark mahogany and the wrap is set, then we wrap. And what's Aaron Franklin's favorite wrap? Well, I blame him for making butcher's paper wrapping famous. So, wrapping with paper works a bit different than wrapping with aluminum foil. Paper will allow the meat to breathe and the juices to escape from the wrap, making the brisket cook a little bit drier. Once wrapped, set the thermometer back and with the grill still at 250 degrees, set the brisket in and let the internal temperature rise to 200 degrees. And now is when we talk about the stall. Anything you cook for a long time at low temperature will experience something called the stall. And it's nothing else than the meat staying or losing temperature while it goes to a different state. When the meats get between 170 and 180 degrees is when the stall happening. And all is happening is that it is tightening down and pushing out moist and heat and it will stay in that process for a little while. And that might freak people out if you are impatient, but that will pass as long as you don't get emotionally involved with it. Let it be, don't look at the temperature too often, and soon you will see the meat gaining temperature again. Once the brisket gets to 200 degrees internally, we will check it, not pull it. We need to poke a bit, mostly the flat side, and the consistency should be like butter, very little resistance. One of the biggest challenges with briskets is to have a cook oil at the same tenant. It is a very uneven thing to cook, and having the same consistency throughout is a very difficult thing. At this point, all we need to do is to rest it. But don't take that part lightly. Resting a brisket is as important as cooking. If you cut it too soon, you will be destroying something beautiful that took you a lot of work. So, rest it for at least one hour. I personally prefer it too, but even more is okay. Set it in a cooler and let it be until you are ready to eat. Our brisket is being resting for about three hours, and it is time to take it out of the wrap. Now is when we can see the beauty of our creation. The colors, the juices, and the smells We prepare your palate for the intense and unique flavors of brisket. As I cut it up, nothing entertains me more than thinking how close we were able to get this brisket to Aaron Franklin's ones. What will he think about my creation? What will he tell me to do different? And how good will he think this really is? I guess those are questions with no answers for now. So let's keep on cutting. If you want to learn more about cutting brisket, I made an entire video about it, listed in the description. And my last recommendation, never use white linen shirts when eating this meat. All right, Miss Ninja, we are ready for this baby. The smells are incredible. Place Juicy here. everywhere. I mean, all we have to do now is to give it a good try. Let's do it. So Miss Ninja can tell me how good it is. Let's do it, let's do it. Where do okay, we start? Okay, Miss Ninja, where do you want to go? We have a lot in there. Whatever you want to go. Right, right here. Go for it. The whole thing? No, no, the whole oh, thing, Oh, I thought she was going wild. No, no. Look All at right. this. Oh, my God. We mm. have this beauty. Let's give wow. it a good try. Mm hmm Hmm. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Mission accomplished, guys. Boom. It tastes real good. It's completely tender. It's so tender and so juicy inside. Now, the only thing that I'm lacking here a little bit is the, the, the smoke ring. As you can see, there is not a lot of smoke ring in here, but it tastes amazing. Yeah. It's really good. What do you think, Miss Ninja? Tell I mean, me something, man. What do you want me to tell you? Nothing else. Talk cannot... about the flavor, Miss Ninja. Talk about the flavor. It's amazing. That's it? It's delicious. It's creamy. It's crazy It's good. delicious. It's the it's best. It's really good. Well, Miss Ninja, I also made some sausages in there, uh, but uh, you look like you are not interested at all. Not at all. Because this brisket is delicious, brother. And sisters. And guys, I have to ask you a question. What? Did you learn something from this video? Did I make you hungry? Did he? If we made you hungry, you have to hit us with the like. Lots and lots Subscribe of to the channel, share with your friends and family, and don't forget Do to it. leave your comments down there. Is this real Texan thing? Is this the most amazing thing you ever tried? Did you ever try Aaron Flankin's recipes before? This is my first time, and I have to say it, it's absolutely incredible. Outstanding. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Maybe I would like it a little bit more if I use some rub into it, something a little bit more, more deeper flavors, oh. not just salt and pepper. Oh. But this is 
delicious, guys. Let's eat. That's all for today, but remember that I love you. Mm, love you too. Thanks for watching and see you next time. All right, Mr. Georgie, are you ready for this one, bro? More than ready, so let's go.